Hey, how you doing? Scotty from Scott's Bass Lessons again. Hope you're well. If you haven't been to the website yet, scottsbasslessons.com, make sure you do so right after this lesson because there's literally hours and hours of videos just like this one for you, get, for you to get your teeth stuck into. Um, today I'm going to be looking at a tune called Teen Town which was composed by a bass player, the bass player, Jaco Pastorius. And it's one thing I get my students to do all the time is get a study piece. And a study piece is a piece that it's going to be really technically challenging to you. It's something that you can't just, you know, pick up and whiz through and that's going to be it. It's something that you're going to have to work on for, you know, maybe a week, maybe a month, maybe even six months I've worked on a study pieces up to. And it's something that kind of comes from the classical world of, of music, classical music, the musicians, there's specific study pieces written and it's, it's a technique thing, it's so they can expand their technique and, and really stretch themselves physically and, and push their boundaries and this is exactly what I use study pieces for with the bass but the unfortunate thing is that the bass, it's a really new instrument, it's only been around since well, I think the mid 50s I'm sure that, that could be wrong, but you know, 50s, 60s, that, that type of thing. And because of that, there's only a few really study pieces out there. So what I like to do is I like to give my students specific stu study pieces that I've worked on so they can get their teeth into it. So let's take a look at Teen Town and check out what it sounds like over the backing track. <laughs> So there you can see it's you know it's quite a heavy piece to play technically there's some parts of it that will really stretch you. A well, the first phrase is the killer for me. That's something I had to work on over and over again to get it down. The reason why this piece is so good as a study piece is not only the technical side of it, but it's the rhythmical side as well. It's super, super syncopated. There's not many notes that are landing on the first beat of the bar. It's always like the first 16th, actually the first phrase, which is, I'll play it really slowly. <laughs> That doesn't actually hit the first the first beat of the bar. It comes in on the, the second sixteenth of the bar. So it's working on stuff like that that's really gonna you know, it's gonna stretch your rhythmical capabilities as a bass player. And as a bass player, that is so important. We are a harmonic instrument, but at the same time we're a, a rhythmical instrument as well. So we've got to really work on the rhythmical side of our playing as well. Now I'm gonna talk you through each phrase of this piece and exactly what chords we're playing over. When you take a study piece like this, as I said before, it's really important to break it down into small bite-sized chunks. Don't, you know, don't take the first eight bars and try and do it. Literally take it bar by bar and just try and get your technique around that and try and, you know, give yourself a bit of a chance to, for the muscle memory to kick in and so you can play that phrase and then move on to the next phrase. Now, if you don't know what I mean when I'm talking about phrases, if I play, for instance, the first, say the first four bars, I'll just talk you through each phrase and you'll, you'll be able to recognize the phrase. They end, they begin and end each phrase. It's not just a long, continuous sort of, you know, run of notes. There is specific phrases that we need to look at. So the first phrase is over a C dominant seven, or it's a C13 chord actually which is a C dominant seven with an added 13, but we'll talk about that later. And the first phrase is on a C. Okay. And that for me is the first phrase. And it's worth just working over and over that because we've got some string skipping happening over here on the right hand. It's a bit of a pain sometimes to get the speed up because of that. 
Just loop it around like that. And then the next part of that phrase. Okay, so it's going C, 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 B flat, which is the flat seven of the C, 13. C, fifth, C. So that's the first part of the phrase. And then we slide up to the major third. When you're working out pieces like this, always try and see the arpeggio or scale of whatever you're playing underneath the actual lick or whatever you're doing because then you can transpose that into different tonalities. If, you're just, if it's just a lick and you've got no idea about how it actually works and why it works, well, then you'll never be able to take that to another chord. When I'm working out something like this, I'm always trying to relate what I'm playing to the chord that I'm playing over. So remember, we're playing over C13 at the minute. So we've gone root, octave, root, flat seven, root, fifth, root, and then we slide up, this bit's, so it's slide up to the major third, then fifth again, then sixth or thirteenth, third, ninth, and then the next chord is an A13. So here, what he does is, um, he actually resolves to the C sharp, which is the third of that A13. So just that first phrase again. Two, three, four. Oops. Two, three, four. So that's the first phrase that you need to work on. Two, three, four. And try and work up that speed as well. To that kind of thing. And now we're still on A13 here, and he plays something so cool here. It's A, which is the root, obviously, of the chord. So he plays A, which is the root of the chord. He plays an F sharp, which is the 13th of the A, and then, and then two notes on the 9th of that A13. Really cool line, that. So, let's look at them two phrases. First phrase, two, three, four. Second phrase. So that for me that's two phrases. That little one, it's a little one. Now this one here. This is such a cool lick. Actually it's oh what's that band called? CeeLo Green? He uses his bass player uses it. Uh, do, 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 do. Camera guys, what's that CeeLo Green tune? Do, 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 do. Forget, you. Forget you. There we go, Rob. Forget you. Um, he uses a similar, or she, I think it's a woman actually that's playing this. He, um, she uses a similar lick in that tune. So check out that tune. Anyway, back to this. Back to this lick. The whole lick is. <laughs> Okay, but we can break that into two little phrases, so it's easier for, to us, for us to digest it. So the first bit, and it's over an F13, I should say, as well. So remember, you should always, when you're playing this type of thing, be thinking about what the actual chord is that you're playing over, okay? So here we go. Now let's break that into the two phrases. First phrase. That's the first phrase for me. And that's like that CeeLo Green vibe. So it's just on an F, all I'm doing is F, slide up to the major third, fifth, 13, fifth, root. How many times have you heard that? Okay, so again. And then I play a dead note here. And then do it a little chromatic run up to that major third again. And again. Once more. And the next little phrase is. 
Now here he's kind of transitioning from the F13 to a D13, so he's next part of the, the, the next phrase. So he's going up to the ninth of the D13. So flat seven, root, that's a passing note to the nine, and then 13, fifth, 13, and two Ds. So let's hear them two phrases linked up, okay? Two, three, four. And again, four. When you're doing this, just like literally sort of just run them round and round again so I can loop it. Two, a three, four. Three, four. Three, four. And that's how you should take these phrases, just loop them round and round and then after you've worked on them singularly, link them up. So let's look at the next phrase. So we've got... This bit here is really cool as well. It's over C13, but it's... So again, he's sliding into that major third. Or... So slide into the major third of the C. Fifth, nine, nine. And then this next bit is probably the coolest lick of the entire thing. And it's over an A13. So again, this is how important chord tones are. If you take this entire solo or piece or whatever it is, you can see that he's targeting the chord tones all the way through it. So this lick, this, well, this phrase, it's kind of resolving, uh, resolving, revolving around the major, th the major third of the A as it goes to the A. So chromatic up to the A, and then he actually plays an A with his first finger. Thirteen, third, nine, and then this is a nice note there. And then back to the third, and then down, to, and then it changes to the F thirteen as well. So where were we? So we did did bop and do 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 did did bop bop. Now this next bit is super cool. It's of a D seven chord. Remember, try and remember your chord tones. You should be always thinking your chord tones. And here, he just takes one idea and he takes it through the entire D7. And all, all he does is he does three chromatic note run-ups to each chord tone, okay? So it goes up to the root first, then to the third, then to the fifth. Two, three, four. Like that. So let's just play the entire piece really slowly up to that point. Two, three, four. Here's that D7 riff. And there it just goes down to the root and hits that flat seven. <clears throat> now the next bit is on an A7 and it uses exactly the same concept of that three chromatic notes going to each chord tone. Two, three, four, one. Oh, do, do, do. That's it, two, three, four, one. Hear the same thing there? So let me take you through that. So he hits an A, it's on the A7, so it starts on the root, root, then three chromatic notes up to the third, then three chromatic notes up to the fifth, then three chromatic notes down to the flat seven. And then it's an F13 and he just plays, which is flat seven to 13, sliding down, fifth, 13, 
fifth root. And again. Oh yeah, he plays that thirteenth twice. Ba -da -do -do. And then Bo -do -da. this is on a C again. Bo -do -da. Or D, sorry. Bo -do -da. Which is A C D. Think about it chord tones wise. Fifth, flat seven, root, and then a ba -da. That's C again, okay? So let's go through the entire thing quite slow and I'm gonna call out the phrases as I feel they are phrases as I go through it, okay? So really slow, two, three, four. That was the first phrase, second phrase, third phrase. Fourth. Fifth phrase coming up. Sixth. Seventh, eighth, ninth, that was the tenth there, the eleventh, oops, <laughs> and it does go on, there's the but I'll be here all day if I'm going to take you through that. So hopefully work on this piece by piece and then bridge it all together, pull it all together. And then by doing that, you're going to have such a better chance of actually getting your fingers around this. This is a really, really hard piece. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to click that link underneath and like it. And on my website as well, like that button underneath and help spread the word about Scott's Bass Lessons. Hopefully you've enjoyed this lesson. If you have, there's more coming soon, so keep your eye out. I'll see you soon. Take it easy and get in the shed.